History for Fools, welcome back to History for Fools. Man, we've been gone for a while. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, um, Day of the Dead, uh, Raise the Dead. We got Bush Escobar. Oh, man, a lot of things have been going hey, on. Hey, shalom. Was, I've been touring. I was out of town. I was out of state. I was out of the country. But, yeah, we're glad to be back. Um, This is the... The, what's a, the History for Fools catch-up pe- episode. And next week, we're going to hit it off with um, Napoleon. So go do, your, go do your homework, and you're welcome to correct us whenever Please. we are right. <laughs> yeah. Because we're always right. We, and um, We so, strive yeah, for man, greatness here. There's going to be a test. So We're just like the Raiders, commitment to excellence. So there's going to be a test, okay? So look out for that. Also... If you don't want to read up on um, Napoleon, just watch the movie. Because we're going to talk about the movie, too, whether it's a fact or it's fiction. And how many times Hollywood's gotten it wrong. I love this. I love this angle because I'm doing the research on Napoleon right now. (coughs) And I'm excited. I was not excited for this movie until you brought this subject up. And now I'm like, ooh, I can't wait because there's a lot of sides to Napoleon, man. There's a lot of different histories on him out there. So I'm excited to to tackle this and then see the movie. Yeah, I'll probably man. watch the movie right before the night before we do the next episode. Yes. When you were a kid, did you um did you like all the, the battle scenes? Yes. Like like, oh. like in um let's see what like uh, what's the what, what's a, a great battle scene where they show a lot of Braveheart. Oh, that, yes, those ones. Dun, 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 dun. Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now is a good one. Platoon. Um, Hamburger Hill had some great battle scenes. Apocalypto, bro. Uh, Don't forget dude, the savage. I mean, real- um, people kind of shit on the second half of Full Metal Jacket, but that shit was pretty heavy, dude. I thought that was actually like a, a great movie altogether. It's like two movies. Yeah, yeah, because you have the boot camp part, which is like, fuck, that's crazy. And anybody you ever talk to that's in the military, or at least back then, like my dad would watch that, and he'd be all, as soon as the guy says, you're all, no, you're all, he says all the bad words for what your race is, my dad goes, yep, that's the military in the 60s. And so, like, he said that's kind of how it was. And I talk to military people now, and they say that the drill sergeant can't really raise his hand at you anymore. No, they can't hit you. That's it. Yeah, they still didn't. I think the common answer is always, like, too many concerned mothers writing letters to, to congressmen. You know? I know, man. It was like, you're going to come back after four years with no war, but he has a footprint in his forehead. I feel like, here's the thing, dude, is like, I kind of feel like, uh, I feel the, the commanders in this one because like, I'm not a violent person by any means, but if you're going to put yourself in a violent situation, you might as well go full fucking blown with it. You know what I mean? Get your ass kicked in boot camp because I, I feel like war is going to be a thousand times worse. I would want, if Bobby were to go to the military right now and they were like, and they're like, Daddy, they beat me the other day. I'll be like, they're probably going to beat you a couple more times. History for fools, man. You know what's sad, you know what's sad though right now about the military and to everybody who th- has ever served, you know, who actually joined or you had no other choice, so you joined the military. Yeah. It's sad now that um, anyone can call themselves now a patriot when they didn't really do nothing. Yeah, there's like a lot of... Just because... Um, People confuse patriotic duty to actually be an actual patriot. Right. Because patriotic duty is, oh, you're going to go vote. You're going to no. serve jury. Right? No. That's that's your patriotic I guess duty. No, but that's a patriotic duty. It is duty a patriotic duty, to but vote. it's a very low end. But yeah, but patriotic duty sure. to vote. Yeah. And then to join and um, uh, uh, so in services. But now, like, everybody, like, there's people out there who, who, who wear all army down and say they're a patriot, but. Then they really, really served, and that, that takes away away from a real patriot oh, who's trying to like, get. So, there's like guys like doing stolen valor. No, anybody, yeah. anybody like who's oh I'm a patriot now, nah, bro. You never served, bro. Dude, there's so many people. It's funny because I did a lot of like overseas stuff with the troops, and I deal with a lot of military people. I got military engagement. So you're just a, a comic that needed money, so you took yes to the gigs. So I guess, yes. You don't have done it for free. I, I mean, no, no, I'm All not right. going to do it for free. I mean, then If you did it for free, then you'd be a comedian patriot. No, I'm not a patriot. But what I do is I talk to those guys 
that have been out there and what they talk about right now is like all these people that are like oh, 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 I'm mad and I'm ready to do shit and I'm a patriot and it's like they haven't even left the comfort of their own home they haven't even left their internet they haven't left, like the dude it's like the minute your lights go out and your internet gets shut off you no longer going to be a patriot trust You're gonna me You're going to be a, like me a soldier yeah. <laughs> What's up, man? You, 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 everybody who's been watch, who listening right now, a lot of things are happening. Yeah, Butch now lives in Los Angeles somewhere <laughs> in Hollywood in a, in a cave, right? In Echo Park. In a cave in Echo Park. I uh, moved into the, one of the ducks that that that's very expensive, thirty five hundred a month. Where you live? I Boyle live in, Heights or I Los live in Angeles? City. I was living Mid-city. in Boyle Heights when I first moved here. And it was rad. Oh, my God, dude. I love Boyle Heights. Let me just say this right now. It was a paradise. I loved Boyle Heights, and I hope to move back there. What street you live in? Um, right now, I live... You were living on Cummings. I was living on... Um, oh, what was the name of that place, bro? Lias by Estrella. Taco. Uh, Lorena. Lorena. I was okay. off of Lorena, right? The Estrella Taco place was five blocks from where Did I lived. Did you eat there? Fuck yeah. Had, Shout out to Tanya Estrada for introducing me to that place. La Estrella Tacos. I, I, I tell people, people don't believe me when I tell them that their tacos are made with a regular sized corn tortilla. Yes. And let me just say this. The price has not changed probably in a while. Not a because we, dude, between me and every time me and Tanya went to go eat, we would get, I'd get three tacos. She'd get two pile of beans, pile of rice, two drinks under 20 bucks. Fuck. Bro. In this economy, dog. Well, heights overall, there's hidden gems that I'm not going to share with people. Don't, bro. Especially that place, bro. <laughs> yeah, that that place. Go to that place because they, they definitely would love to see you there. But there's places that I Do they still have the truck outside too when the restaurant gets busy? Yes. Yeah. They have that. I've only seen that a couple times. But there's that market, bro. I'm not going to talk about where it's at. You told me to go to it. Holy fuck. Dude, that place, you drive by it, you go, it looks abandoned. You walk inside of it, it's like, I'm in, did I just fucking transport to Mexico? It's, dude, I love Boyle Heights. It's amazing, but very bad for my cholesterol. There was a lot of pork, huh? The amount of pork death in Boyle Heights has to be, I would like to see a numbers uh, like a numbers chart of how many dead pigs are in each area of the of the country, and I'm guaranteeing you, Boyle Heights has it, it's absurd the amount of pork product there is there, and the amount of lard that is just like accessible. I know, man. Let me get a sample. What? <laughs> and they give you enough for to make your own taco. Bro, I was eating every day at the we. What is it? Not the we Pueblo. We have that in San Jose. The Vallarta. La Vallarta? Yeah. They had, I would get a chunk of carnitas, a bowl of beans, a bowl of rice, and a, and a bag of tortillas. And that would be my lunch for like three days. 25, 30 bucks, bro. Nourished me, but also uh, my doctor was starting to get concerned about my cholesterol. So I had to start going over Dr. to Dr. Beecham, right? From Boyle Heights. What? What? No, they only said Dr. Beecham. <laughs> That's the dentist you see at Boyle Heights in the, in the marquee. Hey, bro, there's things. There's like a car wash in someone's house. Bob's. Yes. Bro, look it up, bro. There was an assassin there. Bro. No way. Yeah, bro. bro. <laughs> Some, somebody put a hit on somebody. Bro, it's wild, dude. Bro, there, look, just look it up. Um, I don't know if you can look it up right there. Just put um, gang hit near Bob's car wash. That's where Car- Oscar La Jolla washes his car there to this day. Bro, that- to this day. So that area for you me. Go to the fish boat across the street. Best fish and shrimps in um, Boyle Heights. No, Johnny Fish Boat right across the street. I never eat there. I never ate there though. You're not a fish guy, huh? Um, I am, but I'm particular. It has to be like super fresh, and I have to know it's fresh. Um, but the one thing about living there, bro, with that that I fucking loved is one of the things that I, I found in common with you guys when I first started hanging out was the love for uh, Blood In, Blood Out, and that movie, and everybody reciting the lines and shit. 
that whole area is where that shit was shot. Yeah. And I don't know how many people, like, my girlfriend uh, is a big fan now of the movie. Because I was like, before I take you to these places, I have to take you, I have to make you watch this movie. And so after that, I took her around. I took Bobby there. I had I had the best time walking around there, bro. Like it's I love I love that area. I hope I move back. But I will say where I live now, super accessible. Super accessible to everything. Like I was thirty minutes from, from here. When you're at Boyle Heights, did you hear gunshots at night? <sighs> no, not really. Like sometimes I did hear things that I thought might have been gunshots. Sirens. Sirens. There is Helicopter. Shit. Bro, the thing is, is that Boyle Heights in the daytime, it's like Oakland, man. East Oakland in the daytime is like a flea market. It's dope. Hell of shit going on. Food everywhere. There's love. But as soon as it gets dark, you better get in your fucking house, bro. And especially if you're from Northern California, like, you better get in your fucking house, you know? And so, like, uh, I definitely saw shit at night or heard shit at night that I was like, dang, dude. And, like, sometimes you'd walk in the daytime and you'd see, like, a tag somewhere that, let you know, like, okay, this place here at night's probably not a good area to hang out in. So, like, I saw some of that, but it, it wasn't as wild as when I was, like, living in East Oakland. You know, and maybe back in the day it was, because that's the thing is my neighbors were, like, in the 90s. In the early 2000s, this place was fucking wild, dude. So, like... Well, in the 90s, bro, I crashed a car near... <laughs> right there by a place by that KFC, bro, by the freeway. Oh, place. yeah, yeah, yeah. That pizza, by that pizza parlor right yeah, there, Yeah, uh, King Coles. Yes. How is that pizza? I never got to eat that. But how is that place still open? They're probably taxing the whole neighborhood. Two eh? pizzas for twenty one ninety nine. dollars King Coles, right? Yeah. Coles Pizza. Yeah. So wow. Wow, right, they're probably to the property right next to the freeway entrance and right next to the gate. Nobody's going to buy that property. Well, they probably just re, what is it, re, uh, refi every once in a while. There's a lot of hustle and bustle on Lorena, huh, all day long, huh? Bro, that's a People bit, are moving, huh? I, will, I get it now. By the I, B of A. Yeah. I've seen a lot of the East L.A. movies, and I get now what people talk about is its own separate place kind of than L.A. Because it's it's cut off from everything. I get I could see that now. It's its own place. It's fucking rad, bro. Like it has its own like stores, its own economy kind of in a way, man. That's Whittier, huh? Yeah, I love Whittier. Bro, bro. if you go down Whittier even more east, there's a hospital called the East Los Angeles Hospital. And my father was in that hospital, bro. Oh really? And they had that motherfucker on the first floor, bro. He could see people walking by the street. Oh shit. He had remote control with a long stick, bro. He just moved the he moved the knobs. <laughs> How long ago is was this? Fuck, still the hospital's still there, bro. It's called the East Los Angeles Hospital. The old hospitals long, with, fucking scream. It only has two floors, bro. But patients be staying in the first floor, and they can see people pass by, and the the window is covered by a thick ass gate. There it is. <coughs> oh shit! And across the street, there's an auto body place. that's, oh, I, that's covered by Disneyland stuff. Yeah, I remember this place. I drove around that neighborhood on my little e-bike all the time. I loved that place, dude. Um, there was a couple times, you know. Someone yeah, was born like, east, right there, that east, east Los Angeles Hospital, bro. If you don't have health insurance, you could give them your high school ID from the uh, 80s. <laughs> oh, Rough Rider, huh? <laughs> I'm from Garfield, puto, bulldogs. <laughs> hey, Boyle Heights, yes or no, bro? They have a lot of... They have a lot. They have a lot of cemeteries, huh? Dude, what is up with the amount of dead? Cholos be dying, bro. Dog. There is, like, I was like, <laughs> this, I'm my, like, I'm my, like, when I go, because Tanya Estrada lives there. We kick it a lot. Um, on my way to her place, when I would ride, I would ride my bike. I passed three cemeteries, bro. Yes. And that's not even all of them. That's all of them. Yeah. There's, I don't know why Boyle Heights. Has so many fucking cemeteries. Do you know, you know there's about- the big one that goes around. The only way I know this one because that one, I read a blog one time from someone who moved there from another part of East LA to live there, and he said that that um, he said that every every side of that cemetery because people jog around the cemetery, right? He said that every side of that fucking cemetery belongs to a gang. So one side of the wall, yes. wall yeah. might be white fence, 
and the other side might be Primera Flats, and the other one might be Bridge Bridge Street, and the other side is Evergreen Locals. Yeah, yeah. But it's crazy. Yeah, but that's one yeah, of the cemeteries. Because you, 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 when you drive around that middle one, when you're going up Lorena, it's like a I, because they're also secular. There's one that's like a Jewish one. There's and one, and one for Sikhs. There's one for Sikhs. So the big one though, when you're driving down Lorena by the um, and the one for Jewish people too. Uh, by the what is it? The Cinco Puntos market. Yes. So there's that one right there. Um, First Street, I think. Yeah, you could tell when you look at the tags, bro. Ever since we did the history of gangs, I'm able to like look at shit and go, "Oh, I know who that those guys are." <laughs> <laughs> and and you could and dude, they mark their territory off so. He's an expert in gang calligraphy. Yeah, dude, it is. It's kind of, but you guys have a much clearer. Like, cause like if you go to the Bay, except for like Oakland, you're like, who the fuck is this? But here it's like, oh, all right, those guys are here, and then those guys are here, and then every once in a while you could see a scratch out of like, you know. But it's, it, but it's a fool the way Miklo says, Simon que si, that good single puntos. I only ate it twice, and I remember the burrito being delicious. It was good. It's really good. It's not overrated. It's it's not. I don't know if it's it's he's. Here's the thing: is he's from that neighborhood, and I could see that if I was like, you know, from there, and that's all I ate every day, that that would be home to me. It was bomb, bro. Better than B's? No. No, not better than Allen B's. Better and I'll be than Lavic. La Estrella is the best. How about the, the hot sauce, bro? Better than Lavic. Lavic has some badass orange sauce. People from San Jose are not gonna like me for this. And I don't want any more death threats, but La Vic is overrated. <laughs> what? As bro, I'm trying to I'm trying to get La Vic sauce all over the world. <laughs> the, it's good. It's good, bro. Like that's really but good. For you, King Taco Hot Sauce better, huh? There's cause it's you're from San Jose, bro. There's like I don't know. Okay, you go Iguana. to La Vic's. Iguanas is good too, but Iguana fell off. That's my problem is that after La Vix came and kind of like that sauce was amazing at first, right? And it still is. Sorry, Iguana. How about La Papolote, Vic. man? I heard some food in San Jose. Papolote is good, but that's not even San Jose. It's too hot for me. It's not not that it's too hot. It has a distinctive taste. You know that, you don't that, like, that heat is too burny for you to enjoy the Chipotle. flavor. That's how I feel Papalote is. My problem with La Vic sauce is I feel like they watered it down since they first did it. Like when they first had it, it was bomb, bro. And then like when I go back now, it tastes different. And that's the thing is that's what happened to Super Taqueria. That's what happened to um, to Iguanas, La Vic's. I think once you guys start expanding, you lose your flavor or something. You know, and so it's like, man, but there's um, tacos, ball. Oh my God! Am tacos I, where? Um, here in LA or it's Bo in Hush? San Jose. It's the best fucking any Mexican will tell you is the best <clears throat> fucking taqueria in, or uh, Mexican restaurant in San Jose. Is that uh, the one that has mariachi inside. Plaza, yes, Plaza Bul Bulgaria, or not Bul Bul. Oh. It's by Keys, right? I think so, dude. I think I know what you're talking about, bro. I went there twice. One was Johnny Sanchez, and he was annoyed by how many mariachis were in the area walking around. He was, he was trying to tell a story, and every time he told a story, somebody blew a trombone, bro, or a, or a trumpet. But, dude, it was a, it was like a big-ass place, like a Mexican place in San Jose. I don't know if this place still open, but they had mariachis walking around all the tables. It was fucking mi midnight, and it was packed. And outside, there was a lot of chicks they used to model for um, for um, that Lowrider magazine from San Jose. Oh, okay. Not not Lowrider magazine. It was Street Low. Street Low, yeah. Street shout low. out to Street Low. Shout yeah, out outside, to bro, low, bro. Outside was ghetto fabulous. I ain't gonna lie, dog. If it was like a car show outside, and there was people, um, there was nobody speed racing, but there was people like revving their car yeah. high. There was hydraulics. Oh, you're talking about the one on King and Story. Yes. Bro, that Packed. place is bomb, That bro. Mexican restaurant. It's next to a market. Yes. Yeah, and, then, and, a, and a jewelry Open store. Open late. 
Dude, what is the name of that place? That place is one at least top five in San Jose. And they have mariachis, right? Yes, dude. Yeah, that, you know, that know what I'm talking about. It's by the Shakey's Pizza. It's behind it. There's like, it's huge. Yes. I used to eat there with this girl I was it's, in love they, with. They, they have lunch tables. Ah, oh, what is the name of that place, dude? I have left San Jose. It still exists? Yes. Fuck yeah, that place is bomb, bro. Open, I don't remember. I went there late. I used to bro. eat their beef stew there all the time. Yeah, I went, bomb, there, I went there late, bro, and I had these. They're open till like 4 in the morning. I had chimichangas. Damn, people are yelling into their fucking, uh, their like headphones right well, now. Well, remember, bro, I only went there twice. Because there's tacos, Bulgaria Ball, Durama, or something like that. Valderrama. It's, someone's yelling into their radio for that one, and then... The restaurant next to... Um, They're we, saying Tacos Maricón. I see it right like there. Like a Pueblo. They're like, Tacos Maricón. Fuck you guys. <laughs> People shout out Maricón all the time. When they, I've heard that a few times, dude. That's funny. You, nobody, everybody, I don't know if everybody talks about food, but they never mentioned that place we're talking about in San Jose. Yeah. Yeah, There's that's the thing. is like, dude, uh, what's the place we were talking about um, with the orange sauce? La Vic. La Vic's. Is because I'm thinking Casa Vicky's as well. I love man, please, Casa bro. Vicky's has the best homemade tortillas in San Jose, by the way, and the best cafe de olla you'll ever have in your own motherfucking life. I've never had it so good anywhere, and I've had it hella. Um, I but, went there with Armando Cosillo, bro. I think he Googled it or, or somebody that that lives in the area told him about oh, it. Oh, also, there's Chachos. I don't we know went, if that's still up. Fucking, how can I forget? Chachos, shout out to. Um, Frankie Franco as well. Casa Vicky has a a, a fucking a Mexican paneria inside. Yes, and they have a lady making the flour tortilla right outside the window. Yes, and they have refried beans, chorizo and eggs, yes. ham and eggs, oh. potato and ham. Yeah, they have a big ass. They have good albondigas there. Too, also, bro. man, don't get the pancakes. The Mexicans ain't good at making pancakes. No, bro, <laughs> no. Do not go there for American food. No, man, don't be. Don't get disappointed. Yeah. You go there. You get the pozole and the menudo, What's man. What's a good, a good Mexican night. breakfast, would you say? Chilaquiles and eggs, bro. Ooh, you know, Shredded beef and eggs, bro. You want to know what my favorite is? My mom used Chorizo. to make this. This is a, this is a different way of doing um, uh, enchiladas in the morning. She would make them pancake style. She would just take, take the tortilla, fry it a little bit, yeah. put the sauce, cheese, another one over it, sauce, cheese, till it was like a stack of pancakes. Yeah, man. And then an eggs kind of in between. Yeah. And you would cut into it, and it was so fucking good. But you have the, a name for that now. I forgot, I forgot it, though. The easy go-to for me, though, is um, uh, tamales and egg. You could never go wrong with tamales and egg. Where do you get that in San Jose? Uh, um, almost anywhere now. King and Story. No, sorry. White Road, across from the um, Mark's Hot Dogs, used to be a tamale place that I would go to. I remember. Grab a little eggs mm. and some fucking coffee, dude. Oh, I remember, man. like, dude performing stand-up comedy in San Jose at the, the Emerald, bro, or the Everest with the Beer Run Bobby. Shit, where the fuck some is pla- that? The Everest the, Room. The fucking, um, yeah, it was called the... Um, Something with an E, and it, it has to do with a t- with a tree. The Everest, the Emirates. There was a lot of cholos in there, bro. Huh. But anyways, man, I remember I was um, doing my best. I did a hacky joke. I threw a reference out there, and they all died. I remember the last time I was here, man, some chick gave me um, a venereal disease, man. I met her outside that place that says... Ten burgers, ten fries, ten burgers. Ten... Oh, 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 King's Burgers or something like that. Five, five burgers or yeah. five. Never ate there. They die when I said <laughs> that. No one I would have died too, bro. Nobody ever ate in there. Anytime you reference that place, bro, you, people are gonna lose it because, like, only the brave eat there. I there's a certain type of person that eats there, and they are the people you don't yeah, invite. Around, to around, yeah, they're called. They're called um, <laughs> And they carry a bird on their shoulders, eh? Exactly. Anybody with a backpack and a beast cruiser. Bro, they're the people that you invite last to your party. That's all I know. Nah, man. They find out about the party by, yeah. by somebody and they're passing through. There are people who hit you up for Felipe tickets when you come through San Jose with Felipe. <laughs> you never really eat in there? Fuck no, bro. 
To me, don't lie, that dog. price makes me go, no, dude, that's not good. I don't know where you're sourcing this meat from, but it's not. Five burgers, <laughs> no five sodas, it used to be three ninety nine. Look it up, Philip. It used it's to be five for three ninety nine, bro. It's got five burgers, five <laughs> fries, five sodas. Uh, now it's five. It's called Troy's, right? Or King Coke? I think it's King. I can't remember, bro. I never. I would drive by. It's ghetto, right? Bro, that's where you go to get hookers. Like, and not just hookers, bro. Like, dirty, toothless. When I threw that reference in, they died, dog. Of course they did, bro. They died. Half that audience was like, I'll never eat there. And half that audience was like, I fucking love that place. He goes, I remember people hitting me up for you, Felipe. I hate you, man. I, I went by that place only because you fucking said it on stage and I sucked. It sucks, bro. My friend ate there and he got sick. That's one thing I do know. What, what, and they put relish in their burgers. Ooh, that sounds good, dude. Really? Sort of, sort of fat burger, though. I hate relish in burgers. Dude, um, I, I could tell what their burger tastes like just because I know that their their mayonnaise is really, gets really watery with their shredded lettuce and their ketchup. And, their, and so it makes your own little Thousand Island taste. Just like Jim Burgers. Mm. I never thought of doing it like that. Yeah, man. But that place is no good, huh? No, bro. I but, would say the best burgers in San Jose. That's a place where you meet your um, baby mama there, huh? For yeah, a check dude. or... That's the other thing is like, there's this place called House of Pizza. And I know that all the children Mountain Mike's. in San Jose are going to be like, fuck you, butch. But this is... And that's along with uh, the person who wears a bird. Um, they love this place called House of Pizza. It's fucking gross. It tastes like someone's socks. It looks, it tastes like you would take someone's smelly socks, wring it out into the dough, and then mix the dough with it, and then make it the most heartburny shit you could ever put on a pizza. Damn. So those two places are my, my big nose that people go, oh, that's a San Jose staple. No, it's not. That's a San Jose hood staple. Like the fucking long bar, you know? But there's places that are bomb. That you could go to that have good burgers. I'm trying to think where the best. Back in the day, used to be a place, and it was it, uh, Pizza Hut, Hamburger Mary's, and we used to have one of those. Did you? Bomb, no. bomb. Or I know that I'm, I know there's people gonna put comments in the comments. I can't say because I don't want to fuck up our YouTube algorithm. But you're cruel for saying those things. But the, but if you can get past your social. Uh, Issues. It's a wonderful place to eat because Hamburger Mary's was a place where back then, and it was the late early nineties, so gay shit wasn't really that fucking cool. So it was where it was a gay bar at night, but it was a bomb hamburger place in the daytime. So like you know, uh, <laughs> people would sneak over to eat there, and if you got caught eating there, it would be like, "I saw your Hamburger Mary's eating food." It's like. Yeah, that don't mean nothing, though, bro. It don't mean nothing. That went over here to with Hollywood. Yeah? Yeah. You guys have too much amazing food in Los Angeles. How about that uh, barbecue spot off the freeway in San Jose? No? Or yay? Off the freeway, off the freeway, off the freeway. It's a uh, famous barbecue place in San Jose. Oh, the High Life. Bomb. Underrated. Been there forever, right? Been there forever. It's right next to a tiny little J- Japanese town. Yes, yes. Underrated. The high life is underrated as fuck. It's like it's, it's, it's built like an old where old farmhouse. Yes, like old blue. It's house, all right? red. Yeah, yeah, dude. I I ate there that once. Place. It was good. It's expensive. That's Back the problem. In the day. It's expensive, but you're gonna fill up and take food home. So people don't know how to eat barbecue. People think barbecue is cheap huh, in California, I guess. Yeah, dude. I think a lot of Californians don't know what good barbecue is, but like, there's certain places where you can find bomb barbecue, and there's still those. Like Santa Cruz has one. I think it was Coles. It's still there. Then the we also have Sam's in San Jose, which is fucking so good, dude. But I would say the High Life was my favorite. High Life's also like just a drunken staple. You know, you just get ripped and go eat there on your birthday. And then go fuck up downtown after that. And hopefully you don't get arrested. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, man. You got to be missing home, bro. So you moved to us. Uh, so you came to LA and you, now you got a job at the improv. Improv, dude. I'm lucky. Okay, first of all, let me just say this. Shout out to everybody in LA who, who 
is been have interacted with period dude like uh this is a very nice place bro people in la are very very nice overall like even even strangers are way nicer <laughs> than they are in the bay area but hey, the people that were actually raised here and live here are super cool huh people are so fucking f- cool and friendly bro like i think you guys been through so much in this place that it just fucked everybody up into being nice to each other <laughs> because like and nobody wants does that tell my girl because sometimes you have to get aggressive with people like in the parking lot like i'll be like you go there and they'll move and they don't put up a fight or be like hey fuck you man they'll just be like oh sorry and it's like holy shit people dude this guy fed my meter when i took off to go shopping and he's like hey brother i put money in your meter. i'm like let me give you so he goes, no no man i want to help and i was like man i love this place but also the comics that I've been meeting, and then shout out to my friends at the uh, improv staff, dude. I love that job, bro. I'm having the best time of my life here in L.A. The only thing I miss is my girl. But other than that, dude, uh, this place is rad. I love it, man. I love how I'm being treated here. I'm having the best time. How New Year's Eve at the improv? Fun, fun. I'm so party. glad I got to work it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone out. Antonio still there? Antonio was still there. He, I, I don't know if he was there that night. How many years think, since they opened, huh? Bro, probably since they opened. I've never asked him. Um, it's funny because sometimes people will feel bad and they'll be like, you guys are working this old man to death. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> what are you going to do? Go home and die? He could leave whatever he wants, you know? Like, he got sick for a while and we were really worried about him. And we would get, let me just tell you how much we care about Antonio. For love, look for Antonio from the improv picture. Every, sure. every day, we have what's called a pre-shift at the improv. And we go over the managers, what the show is going to be like that day, if we're going to sell out, what we're going to have to look out for. And when he was sick for like three weeks, every day we got an Antonio update as well in our in in our briefing. So it was like, just to let you guys know, he's still hanging in there. We told him to stay home because we just want him to feel better. Like, if you go to the improv and you see this old man bringing your food out, he loves being there. It it it's I get it too though because like. I'll tell you, bro, there's times where I'm not feeling good that day and I'm depressed and I go into work and all of a sudden I'm happy. Like, I'm really happy to be there. It's fun. I mean, it's... There's Antonio with a hundred plates. Bro, that... Hey, you know what I like about him is because he whistles like a truck backing up so that you always know he's coming. So he's always... Like, Don Felipe, como estas? Yeah, he always says to say hi to you. He gives me a hug and then he says, tell Felipe I said hi. And then the rest of the improv uh, staff does as well. What's up, fool, man? You been all right, man? Yeah, I've been good. How about you, dude? How about, dude, you went on a, a long journey, man. Bro, after this, after we, we said after the holidays, during Christmas, I went to go do the mothership in um, Austin, Texas. Okay. And, uh, man... The the mother the outside of the mothership or well, the whole you know like the sixth street area. I heard it's live, bro. It's live, bro. Like, but um, there's like two types. There's um too many cops walking around. Oh really? So there's a, a lot of cops, um, presence everywhere, and and then there's also state police presence walking around too, right? Okay. So it, it, it feels like a military zone already, but there are people walking around. But also, man, there's a lot of knuckleheads walking around. Right. A lot, bro. And they actually don't care that those guys are walking around with guns. So, no shit. So somebody pulled a gun out when we were there. I was performing, and there was a shootout. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah. And I don't know how many people got shot, but Philip was right there selling merch. You, you, you heard the bullets? Yeah. I, I saw the people running. They're running. They shut the doors down. It was crazy. That's crazy, was dude. They shut the whole thing down. Is that common? That Tech- is- they said it was, it's Texas. That's what they're saying. That's what they say, huh? It's Texas. Because it's open and carry. <clears throat> right. Everybody has a gun. Yeah, man. The mothership is nice. Everybody there is kind of tall or they're they're either a, fi- a UFC right. fighter or they lost too many fights and right. other security there. Like, this, oh, like, I bet security's not. Like one of the doormen. Like one of the doormen, he was like standing there, bro, um, with a kettlebell. 
Really? <laughs> like, like a lifting kettlebell? Yeah. To what? Being someone? No, just, just practice just holding. Just to work. Yeah. While well, you're standing in the door, it's like, might as well kettlebell, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm doing, bro? I'm, I'm fucking looking at memes. You're drawing dicks, Todd. Like, I'm looking at memes in my phone leaning forward on the podium. Full of food, they had not their phone on, right, Philip? No, no, no. They had headsets or all, all UFC fighters. Damn, bro. They're ready for business out yeah. there. Yeah, but, but when they started shooting, they all ran too, there. eh? When they started shooting, they all ran. They all ran anyways, bro. Guns. That fool hey, left, left the kettlebell there, bro. I tripped over it, eh? <laughs> you can't Kimura a fucking bullet, dog. <laughs> They have, they have, they, they fucking different type of drinko that night. <laughs> they put he him on. on. He was on drug and shit. He was on drug. Hey, everybody, okay? <coughs> he was on a breath. They're all go check. That's fucking hilarious, dude. Yeah, well, they 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 killed that fool that pulled that gun out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, did they shoot yeah, that guy? They no, shot him. So someone dead. died for sure that night. Oh, yeah, he, he, he was shot by the state police or by the cops. Bro, there's so much death, dude. That's crazy. But, but um, he didn't shoot nobody. I mean, allow, but the video crazy. is out there. If you want to watch the whole video and if you want to comment on it and take your take. But yeah, man. Someone like, link me in that shit. I've been, I to, like, I've been shit. to a lot of comedy clubs, bro. There's never been a shootout, eh? Sorry. I will say this. I did a comedy club in Sacramento. And it was Actually, a- I'm lying, bro. I've been to a lot of shootouts after I left. At the comedy store, bro. Oh, yeah, I bet, dude. It's been two at the comedy store. Walk coyotes. Was there one in there's never been one inside the club though? Nah. Just people bombing. <laughs> <laughs> but people, people dying there, but you not really they, dying. The comments up that you wish they were shy with. Yeah, dude. Holy shit. Oh, so after um after um Austin, I went to uh, New York to the lower east side and I was staying at the same spot. That guy says what's up. The one we went yeah, to. Yeah, the hotel. He said, what was up? his name, dude? I Antonio. Have to... Yes, dude. Tell that. Oh, man. Dude. I, I had learned, so much fun bro, there. Bro, I learned a lot that week. I was there for a little longer, waiting for Lisa, Lisa and I stood there. I showed up with a suit that was too long and too fat for me. Oh, really? So I talked to the the guy in the front, right? The Jewish guy? Yeah. He goes, man, where can I get my stuff hemp? I go, are you kidding me? You're in the, the the right place. Yeah. Bro, every place that I walked to was a hemming place. Right. So they hemmed my pants, made them smaller to fit me. All that under $16. It Get was, the fuck out of it here. It was done in less than an hour. Under 16 bucks. I was thinking 60 The pants it alone be, were $7, 6 I gave the guy 10 And then the other pants, the, to make them thinner, was another 8 I'm gonna buy a suit here. Bro, there was five there. guys. There was five guys. I mean, those guys, bro. So this is the thing people don't know about big dudes is they don't make suits that fit us correctly like like smaller people have. So you buy this bulky ass fucking thing a at curtain. a big and tall shop, and you either look like shit, like like you just got out of fucking court half the night, or you go get it tailored. But it's expensive to get it tailored around here. Right? Unless it's... I don't know how it is here in L.A. But you gotta go to downtown L.A., bro. There's a little guy from, from 18th Street or any other gang. Yeah. And, and some dudes out there, like ex-gang members. Not just saying 18, but the guy I saw, I think he was from 18. Okay. And they'll fucking hem your thing. Where you, you can walk out of there with a suit, hemmed, ready to rock for 220 No way. Okay. All right. Right there, um, I don't know the name of it yet, but there used to be a place right next to another place. On Los Angeles. Yeah, Los Angeles Street, dog. Rad. So you were in New York. I went to the place where the fucking um, Beastie Boys hung out at. Okay. Lower East Side. They're fuck, they named the street after them. I did that, dude. Um, I did a lot, bro. I went to the... Um, How long were you in New York a for? A day and a half. Okay. I went to... Um, to the... I went to... I was in Lower East Side. I went to Chelsea. Chelsea's Market. It was badass, dude. Dope. And then uh, I, the next day, bro, I uh, chilled. Oh, there's a smoke shop, a brand new smoke shop right next to the to the hotel where I was staying at now. Okay. And the, lo- the same hotel. The same hotel we were at. Right there in the corner. Okay. And they had all Mike Tyson marijuana. Oh. And then the guy recognized me. the ears so, and stuff, so, so too? He, the ears. Nice. So he hooked me up. Those are actually really good, bro. Like, who had it? Philip, you had yeah. it, right? Yeah. 
Bro, those were bomb, dude. So they had ears and they had um a bunch of his stuff. And so I ate a big dinner, bro. I ate one of those um chop chop steaks from New York. Yeah. It was impossible Ooh. meat, bro, with the peppers. Aki was in there, so I had it my way. Nice. And uh I mean I had an extra one. The next day, flew to London, bro, five hours. Five hours to London. From that's New it. York. That's it? From New York. Bro, that's like here. That's not even all the way here to New York. That's from like. 11 hours from here to London. Get the fuck out. So I, that's why I, I stood in New York where that's we were relaxed. That's like stopping on the way to Button Willow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should have known it and out. Yeah. <laughs> Button Willow. You're there, bro. Yeah, Button Willow is the halfway point between the Bay and, Ka- and LA. It's a good name for that place, but. Yeah, it's fucking ass, bro. There's that nothing place. Nothing there, man. But that hotel is clutch, bro. Because, like, I've definitely been like, man, I fucked up last night and didn't sleep enough, and I'm going to just pass out here for 50 bucks. It's cheap, huh? Yeah. So like New York was your was your like button willow in a way. So got to London, bro. Um, I, I hooked up with. This is uh, your first time in Europe, right? London, man. I was there yeah. by um by King George statue. Uh huh. Had a had a, had a little a little uh, patio in my hotel. What was your first impression when you got into London? What was the first thing you were like? This is fucking different. I said, yeah, man. I I I went bike riding and there was a bike lane with a bike with a red light and a green light for bicycles only. So now is a, this Lisa's first time as well? First or just, time too. Okay, all right. And then the next day we uh, we stood there for two days. I got to I went to a place called Camden, Camden uh, Yard. Camden Yard. Yeah, okay. that like Berkeley. Yes, I'm, you'll like it. I've always wanted you to visit be Camden there. Yard. I saw everybody there look like you. <laughs> Everybody was there super chill, man. Bunch of hippies. Super nice. But yeah. I was in an elevator with a drunk British guy. He goes, happy days. Yeah. I'm fucked up, bro. Like Dr. Bobadier, Mr. Bobadier and shit. Hell yeah, bro. That's dope. Um, McDonald's had like five different types of veggie burgers. Really? Wow. I ate some good ass, okay food. Then the next day I went to, the next day I took a train full three hours to Amsterdam. How was Amsterdam? <laughs> bro, as soon as I got to Amsterdam, I already wanted to move there, bro. Really? Yeah. How is the weed there compared to ours? Well, it's the same because they have a section now in the menu that says it's Cali weed, and it's all Cali weed. And it's real Cali weed. Yeah. All the same names. Okay. OGs. So they know what's up then. And then over here. They're they, not trying to be like, this is our shit. Fuck them. Yeah. And over here, they had the other stuff, bro. The skunks. The the oh. stuff. So I, I had some, I bought some Cali weed, bro, like right. a, a whole eighth, and then I bought some Moroccan hash, mm. bro. How's the Moroccan hash? As soon as I put my, my the match to it, I put it, I tested it first yeah. with a little match, yeah. and I put it down, sizzled. Nice. It was already sizzling. Why bro. did you want to move there right away? What was the re- why was that the, your reaction? The fresh air, bro. It was cool, bro. Really? I, I felt like, yeah, I could live right here, man. Have you been there before? Yeah, but I didn't feel that way because I was a crackhead. Right. You weren't <laughs> seeing it through the eyes that you have now. Like, you got that canal running through it. You got... Did... The canal, I figured it out, bro. The canals, it's like a spider web. Okay. And the middle part where everybody's chilling, everything else spreads out like a spider web. Right. And... I, I, they told me to. I've been. I was told to fuck off in Dutch, English, and and uh, Arabic, bro. Nice. Cause sometimes I, I look to the, put it up. Okay. Yeah, bro. Oh, that one. The web. third, fourth one over on the top, right yeah, there. Yeah, spider web, bro. Dang, that so, looks crazy. Me, go back to the other one. See right there, that one right there. Yeah. The, the, the the second one in the bottom. Yeah. My Airbnb where I was staying there was right there. What the fuck? Across the street from that black shit. So were you looking out on the canal? I was looking at the canal, bro. Let me ask you something. Do they have the same problem like Venice is having where like the water's creeping, the water level is rising there? No, but some of the buildings in the back, the old ones are, are shrinking. They're like they're like kneeling. Oh, they're leaning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you go visit Anne Frank house? She was in there. <laughs> So I didn't go. <laughs> she was hiding, bro. <laughs> uh, she's I went to the shit. Van Gogh Museum, but it was sold out. <laughs> so I went to another cheaper museum. Like, it was like one of those modern art museums. 
and I got to see like a shitload of Banksy's. Dope. I think that's always the thing to do because I know whenever me and you go somewhere, um, I I like to hit the town, but we usually hit it on the weekends. So every popular museum in every city we're in is packed. <laughs> There's always one museum that's like random, like the graffiti museum or like this type of museum. And I go to those, and I always find them to be super fucking interesting. Look up right there on, um, um, I eat a lot of fries, bro. I fries every day. I eat fries every fucking day, bro. Oh, I Belgian heard, yeah. fries. Oh, my God, dog. The first fries we got, bro, they had, like, peanut butter dressing on top. Like, it was tam- peanut Ooh. butter. It was all brown and sweet with garlic mayo on it and spicy ketchup, bro. Have you ever had a peanut butter and jelly burger? Never, bro. Amazing. I saw one time that... With um, bacon, by the way. These, right there, bro. Right there. What's the name of that fry place? It is called... Man, Manicabus? Well, I had this, play, this, this fry place at that, bro, every single day. Bro. Oh, my God. Voluntarily or because that I was all there to. was to eat? I wanted to. You wanted... Oh, you sent me videos of it. You sent me, like, a video of it. That place looked amazing, bro. And I and um I think what was the I think it was in um Amsterdam. I had the bombest Indian food, bro. It was I had vegan butter chicken. I bet I bet you they had really good vegan food there. But but they were, they don't have over there, bro. They, like you like you like iced coffee, right? Yeah, I love iced coffee. Okay, they don't they don't make brewed iced coffee. It's Americano iced coffee. You were saying it was hard there to find no a good coffee. cup of coffee there. Was no there. coffee. Because it's tea, right? They're All tea. tea. All the coffee with Americano, bro. So let me ask you, is the tea is caffeinated? The, the, the tea is caffeinated, yeah, but I don't but like it. it is as caffeinated. Just like regular English herbal tea out here. Oh, regular so tea. Which is not as a caffeinated. What the fuck? Yeah, man. Coffee's, I'm like, so, back so, then, coffee was, like, more of an Arabic I'm thing. so glad the, the, I'm so glad the, the in Boston, they threw that tea in the fucking ocean, bro. We'll be drinking tea right now yeah, here in America. Yeah, fuck all that. Dude. I need my brewed coffee, homie. Fuck yeah, bro. But I was in London, bro. I spoke to a lot of British soldiers. They're ready to come here, bro, to LA to protect Mexicans and blacks. Really? I made it up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I was re- I was like three blocks away from the palace and even go in in London. Were you not interested in that at all? Bro, I did some of the other stuff. Yeah, there's. I wouldn't be that interested in that. Myself. You know where I was staying at? I was staying by Scott. Oh, my hotel was called Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard. That's the, the original police station of Scotland right. Yard is now a hotel. That's where I was staying. So at. Scotland Yard is their FBI now, right? Isn't yeah. that like it's a re- reference to their like highest police department? Foo. The bar in the restaurant was named after one of those female gangs we talked about. In, in uh, the History for Fools. Oh, dope. History for Fools. Really? Yeah. I can't remember the name of that gang, but um, did you go to any small towns while you were out there? Did you any visit any hamlets? Just Camden. The 40 Elephants. The 40 Elephants, bro. The 40 Elephants female gang. The 40 Elephants, bro. They became the Alibaba and the 40 Thieves in America. Oh, wow. And then the 40 Elephants became the Dead Elephants in here in fucking... The dead rabbits. But we need to revisit the huh? like, East Coast. There they go. See that lady out there? They named the bar after her, bro. Oh. And they had very, very posh drinks, bro. And the bar, they had a speakeasy in my hotel room. You push the door and there's another bar. If I think if... I was thinking about this the other day because I get a lot of people who send me stuff after an episode, after we've done a few episodes... Um, where it's more information and I've definitely gotten stuff like, oh fuck, I wish I would have known that that was interesting. So I wonder if, if people, you know, put in the comments if you think it's a good idea, but if we should revisit some things to add on to, because that's one aspect that I think we missed a lot of because we did so much West coast gangs Yeah, that we didn't get to a lot of the East coast gangs, which are like really old and come from like picky blinders. Yeah. I think we should get in and then maybe even do London gangs too. Uh, I mean, I would love to hear what the audience has to say about that, but the craze, yeah, dude, it, it, there. That's the thing is, there's a lot of interesting factors. Yeah, because um, in uh, London there was the craze, the tw- the brother, they were twins. Okay. And they made a movie, about, two movies about. Oh, them. did they really? Yeah, and um, Tom Hardy plays both characters in one of them. 
Oh, nice. And okay. then the other one is a guy from um, a band. I can't think of the band right now. Mm. But they don't get a. They were talking shit about Paul McCartney. And the two brothers always are, are always fighting. Oh, you're talking about the um, uh, Oasis. Oasis, yeah, the Oasis they, they, brothers. Like, we're the new Beatles. The, no, the Oasis brothers, were, they're in a movie. Noel Gallagher and, 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 the, and what's the other guy's name? Yeah, the movie's called The Craze. Legend. The Craze. Huh? Legend also. Yeah, Legend is the one with Tom Hardy, but the other one's called The yeah, Craze, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, K-R-A-Y-S, got it. And these guys, bro, they were gangsters in London. And they were th- they were running shit, bro. Him and the brother. One of the brothers was gay, and but they were both hardcore. And American gangsters try to go in there during prohibition to set up casinos and all that. So the whole big old thing started. Wow. Okay. What time we have, Philip? We're at fifty minutes. All right. So what's up? Are you ready for Napoleon? Yeah, dude. Um. Um. What you been up to though, man? You been reading any books though besides guns? Uh, I have not been. Doing a lot of, like, actually I've been doing some history, just like freestyle history writing, reading, you know, just because out of the interest of being in L.A. and moving here and 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 just all the cool stuff that that is around. But, um, you know, moving away from home was tough, dude, because it was like a shock for me. I never left the Bay Area in my life, and um, I wanted to make it a good transition. So I did a lot of, like, uh, just, you know, self-work working on myself um i was really worried that because you know when you first start out in comedy you have a hustle like you've never had in your life and then once you get used to how things are you kind of you get into these patterns and for me being in the bay area i was able to get booked a lot i was able to get love from people it wasn't a lot of hard work in the end there and i was worried if i you know coming to la so late because most people come in their fourth or fifth year that I would be lazy and not work as hard. But this place, I've been working so much that I haven't had time to even uh, really miss home that much. You know, like I miss my girl, like I said, but to be honest, man, uh, it's it's been fun restarting over again, like doing open mics, going to showcases, you know, pretending like I'm, you know, haven't been in the business as long as I have. You know, so it's, it, I've had a lot of productiveness, man. Like, I'm so blessed with all the luck I've had since I've been out here. I saw you went to that George Perez thing. It was so fun, dude. George Perez is so fun, dude, to hang out with sometimes. Because, like, he gets me into rooms that I normally can't get into. And uh, we have a lot of fun getting high. But that George Perez signing was definitely fun. A lot of fans from this show came out and said, what's up? And took pictures. I appreciate seeing you guys out there, man. Mention that room you got in the vegan room uh, you oh, got. Oh, yeah. When is your next show? People can go. So th- the next show for that is going to be the 24th of February. February, February 24th. Hey, if you're in San Sa- Francisco, first of all, shout out to Butch McLeod. God, bro, I can't tell you how much of a savior Butch McLeod is in he my life. He came 10 deep? Bro, he came at least 10 deep. And, and he said he's going to bring more. No pressure, though, Butch, because you're a good dude. Um, it's going to be the 24th. That's funny. No beef comedy. The 24th of it's February. It's a vegan spot. No beef. Vegan spot. If you're, food, not, right? if you're not vegan, here's the thing, because I know that some people are like, but I'm not vegan. There's alcohol. There's, there's. Uh, I think there's a beer. We're trying to get a liquor license. But the food? I go to a lot of vegan restaurants with my friend here when we go on the road. So I could say that I'm a good judge of vegan restaurants, especially not being vegan and being able to cross Ooh. over and being fat. Um, this place is so fucking good, you guys. It's so good. And the shows are really good. Uh, we had a headliner. Um, oh, that I headlined, but the um, feature was a girl named Shanti. She fucking murdered it. JD was there. He fucking murdered it. Richard Barney, dope-ass comic, helping us uh, produce the show. Come out, you guys. Come check it out. Come support this place because it brings me back to the Bay. It allows me to come back and see you guys and be with you out there. And there's a lot of Felipe fans in the Bay, so you guys know who I'm talking about. So uh, come see February us. February 24th. 
No beef. Oh, look, it's already up to the date. Nice. Good yeah. shit. Shout out to Richard Marnie. Good job, bro. Fuck, dude. <laughs> he just did that today, dude. He just did that today. So uh, the food tickets is are good up. There, dude. The food is so good, right? Dude, and here's how it happened, bro. This is my favorite story about because people are like, how the fuck did you find this place? We literally got off the plane going to Napa. You were like, let's find a vegan spot to go to that's nearby. South City is not San Francisco. It's like a whole city in its own. And it's the nearest to the airport. It's a whole different world. And it is. It's a whole different world in the Bay. It actually really is. Um, Or at least that part of the Bay. And we pulled in, ordered food. Felipe got this egg that looked like a real egg. Which we've never seen in any of the vegan restaurants we've ever been to. And you pop it open like yolk. And I'll be honest, it tastes just like an egg. I got two of them, actually. There it is. Yeah, look at that, dude. It is. Eggs better than what I got. Yes, it is amazing. Um, they had a sisig there that I got with egg last time. That was fucking Oh, that's that the Filipino energy. food. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. That shit is amazing. <laughs> Holy cow, that stuff is fun. Phil, have you ever had that? Never. It's not oh. nice. It looks good, though. Come out, you guys, 24th, uh, 7 February 24th. PM. Um, yeah, support it, man, because I, I definitely want to keep coming to the Bay. Um, shout out to everybody who came to Sacramento to see me. Everybody who came out to Sacramento in a headline, man. Dude, all the Felipe fans, bro. Thank you, guys, man. All the love I've been getting from this podcast and being on the road with you, man. I, I really appreciate everybody. Thanks for supporting. Yeah, man. And then I got dates coming up with you, man. Yeah, you got dates, right? Yeah, dude. When? Um, Here they are right here. <laughs> you were bigger then, bro. Well, that was the other day. That was at uh, the punchline. Oh. Chris Porter uh, was, uh, I was featuring for Chris Porter. Oh, the, the pothead. Bro, he's so fun, dude. He, he I smokes a lot, too? Yeah, uh, I don't know if he smokes a lot, but we smoked before every show. And and he tapped before I tapped, that's for sure. But he murdered all weekend, dude. It was great. The punchline where? Uh, Sacramento. And then Art I did. Arden Way? Huh? That's an Arden Way. But I headlined a uh, whole weekend at Laughs Unlimited, which to me, man, shout out to Laughs Unlimited because they take guys like me that not very many people know of, but are funny, and they give us whole weekends. And then they pack that place with their own people which become your people afterwards. And there's that Laughs Unlimited show we did. It was packed out. We did a couple of uh, sold-out shows there, but all the shows were packed. So that was a good weekend, man. We had a lot of... Bro, the last two months, three months, me living here has been like crazy busy, dude. Crazy, insane busy. Uh, And again, it's coming out here, a lot of love, dude. A lot of comics were like, hell yeah, you're finally here, bro. Fucking now we can fuck with you, dude. So, and it's, you know, it's rad, bro. It's because whenever I would be somewhere and I'd hear my friends who in LA talking about LA or like I'd hear, we'd be on tour and I would hear Gabby talk about it with Rodrigo. You guys did talk about stuff in LA. I would kind of be in my mind like, damn, bro. I don't get to talk like this. Like, I don't get to be out here. I don't get that access. Yeah, man. And it's nice to be here, dude. It's nice to, like, it's nice to drive here and do this show now, dude. And we're every week here, man. I'm so fucking excited. Yes, History for Fools will be here every Tuesday. Every well, Tuesday. actually, Tuesday. I don't know what day it'll be released. Yeah. But it's going to be a weekly thing now. So, so let everybody know. Also, um, yeah, it'll be Butch uh, Felipe, History for Fools. Napoleon next week and then every week we'll let you know what we're going to talk about the next week so you can have this time more time to study and get it together if you guys have ideas too um obviously put them in the comments I'm very uh interactive with with you guys on my Instagram so also go look for the history for fools on TikTok please do that as well um, but message me if you have ideas or if you think something's interesting or if you saw us or if you, I fucked up and made a mistake. Um, but I'm pretty interactive and I love talking to you guys. I love seeing you at shows. And I also love when people go, we love the podcast. We watch it like that shit juices me up. So like, please come out to shows. Uh, please interact. Say what's up, man. And, uh, tell me what you want to see next. 
you know, tell us what what other suggestions we could do to make this more interesting. I love the the suggestions we already get. Yeah, man. Shout out to the, my fans that sh- all that showed up to my show in Rotterdam. Oh, nice. I did a show in Rotterdam, How is bro. that? Good, bro. I had some people that saw me in Montreal. Okay. That went to my show in Rotterdam. And um, Rotterdam, man, a lot of history in Rotterdam. They were bombed by the by the Nazis. 1,200 bombs. Whoa. 1,200 pounds of bombs dropped in, no um, shit. in Rotterdam. Like, they were hit hard, bro. Like All that was left was a church, and that church still stands. So all the buildings in um, Rotterdam are modern, and if you speak to any Rod, Rotter, person from Rotterdam, they'll, they'll straight up tell you, "We ain't Amsterdam. They got their own shit, and nice. they'll, they'll let you know, bro. They were bombed. To them, it happened like yesterday, bro. right? They still feel it. Yeah, because they're uh, dude. Wow, dude. That's they, interesting. Like, when I went to go look look up the history about it, because you don't want to know more. But the guy who booked me for the show, he was talking about it like he was dialing me how it happened and. And there was supposed to be a ceasefire, bro, and, and but they never got to the ceasefire, so the Nazi kept bombing them, bro. But then they apologized, but then you know people from Rotterdam said, "Nah, fuck all bullshit. that bullshit." Yeah, you're full of shit. Yeah, but they got bombed more wow. than, than Amsterdam. We know you seen Amsterdam; it still stands. Right, right. All those all those yeah. homes from 1400 are still there. I wonder how, um, cause there's, cause have you ever heard of Dresden? Yeah, bro, there was this bar over there on Silver Lake uh-huh. where these two people used to perform <laughs> Staying Alive. <coughs> uh, Dresden is another, bo- like, a city that was, like, I think it's, like, the most bombed-out city in Europe in Europe? World War II. I wonder how close Rotterdam was to that. Because I passed by, we, on my train, we stopped in Belgium. Was, see, there's that's Rotterdam. That's the church. Jesus, the, dude. No, show Rotterdam now. Okay. So that's Rotterdam, bro, and I was there. Let me ask you something, dude. Holy look, cow, look how that's, beautiful that that's is. That's Amsterdam, yeah. huh? Rotterdam. That's thank, Rotterdam? Thank you, Hitler. <laughs> is that Rotterdam? Yeah. Jesus Christ, it's beautiful. Yeah, bro, it's a beautiful city, bro. And, man, it's very... Uh, how do you say it, man? Very artistic. Right. Yeah, yeah man, and um, I, I I could buy... I went Post to modern era? I went to a, and in the store. <laughs> you, could buy, you could buy Viagra at the, at the farm. That's my, my that's show, the show, huh? That's show, yeah. Yeah, play it. That's when they rock the dog. Rotter down. Oi. Oi. That means hello. Oi. Hello, bro. Oi. Did they understand clearly what you were saying? Yeah, they're all spoke a, a lot of Latinos in the audience who really? grew up in the area. Did you meet any Mexicans out there? Yes. No. I way. did. I met a woman who was because I asked I asked the guy's wife from the show. Where's all the Latino clubs for salsa? You know where to go. Right. Then I got a long message from a Mexican comedian, a female, and she does. I don't. I don't know if she does. Uh, shout out to you, in English or Spanish, but she sent me an email and she invited me for um, Christmas dinner at her house. Okay. To because they're gonna have like a traditional Mexican. Wow. Year, Christmas, we know where they're the fucking big And is she from there? She's, she's bo- from London. Born and raised? Yeah. No, she um she moved to London to do stand up. But her family lives there now. How is stand up in London? Bro, I didn't do it. I didn't perform there. Okay. But I did it in Rotterdam. Did you hear about it though at all? Or did they talk about it? Uh, like... from um I heard from, English... what's her name? Um performs there every year. Um uh uh um uh, Lydia Popovich. She she gave me a couple of rooms to go, but I didn't have time to go. Damn, dude, I would love to do that. But yeah, Rotterdam. I, but I after um when I man, I, I don't know what, what type of comedy they get, but um, they like American comedy because it just um I guess it just comes out with more confidence. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that more in your face. I yeah, because they've had your they've had um, uh, English stand up for a while. You know, I mean, as long as I can remember, in the nineties. You know, like Eddie Izzard and shit like that. Um, but they have their own brand of comedy. So I can see how now that American stand-up is starting to become worldwide, um, that, that it's a refreshing uh, different thing for them. Nah, it's fucking rad, dude. What's up? If you're in London and you want to book me, what's up, bro? Fucking bring me out there. I'll do your little clubs. 
Yeah, man, I can't wait to go back. I'm probably gonna go. I'm probably gonna go back when I get my time off before the next tour starts. I'm probably gonna go in June to do Rotterdam again. Okay. But yeah, I'm probably gonna. Um, I, probably, I might get off the train in Belgium. You never know. Try some real Belgium fries. Ooh, dude. What's up, everybody? History for fools. History we'll see you next fools. week, man. Don't forget. Go do your homework on Napoleon. <laughs>